yeah, the juice is loose. Mmm, feel it. Is that camera on? Turn that off. Tur turn, turn that off. Uh, you guys didn't see anything there, not at all. <laughs> Good morning, family of fast. Matt Mossman, the Chief Endurance Officer over at Endurlete, here today to talk to you about a hot topic or trendy topic and a somewhat controversial topic. And this is performance enhancing drugs in endurance sports. And I got the idea for this video after watching the uh, Netflix documentary Icarus. And for those of you who haven't seen it, Icarus basically follows this amateur cyclist. Uh, uh, through a season of road racing and during this time he's experimenting with performance enhancing drugs like EPO and testosterone and seeing how it affects his performance from you know when he starts it to when he's done with it. And anyways to make a long story short I mean his improvements while on these drugs are pretty substantial. Now I'm not here to talk about the ethics of performance enhancing drugs. I would not touch that with a 10 foot Pole. But as an exercise physiologist, you know, I think it's pretty interesting how these drugs work. And that's what we're really going to talk about today because I'm sure a lot of you are curious about how these uh, drugs work from a physiological perspective. So I'm just going to present you two things today. We're going to look at how EPO enhances endurance performance and how testosterone slash steroids enhances endurance performance. So we'll basically say or tell you what they are from a physiological perspective, how they're increasing performance, but then also look at some of the side effects of some of these performance enhancing drugs. And uh, then we'll just wrap it up in a nice little package. And uh, again, I'm not gonna touch the ethics on this one if I, if I can't help it. So let's look at the first one. And this is EPO. Now EPO stands for erythropoietin. And because that's a tongue twister, I'm just going to say EPO from this point forward. Now EPO is a protein in the body that increases uh, red blood cells. Now by itself, EPO is not going to elevate red blood cell count substantially. But what scientists have done or dopers have done is figured out a way how to increase uh, EPO in the body. And what EPO does again is it increases red, red blood cell count count and as we all know or may not know the more red blood cells that you have the more oxygen that gets delivered to your working muscles so more oxygen equals being able to run ride faster longer stronger without getting fatigued as quickly now, the, what the dopers have done in the past is they've done blood transfusions to increase the amount of uh, EPO in their body. But there are also drugs out there that are synthesized that can also do the same thing. But the point being is EPO increases red, red blood cell count. Red blood cells carry more oxygen to working muscles, and that's where you get the benefits of EPO. But EPO isn't without side effects, especially in warm hot conditions and if you aren't hydrating and if you're doping with uh, EPO or blood doping, your blood can turn to sludge and kill you. So you just got to really weigh, you know, is EPO really worth the trade-off of uh, death? <laughs> and I'd say no. <laughs> so that is EPO. Now let's look at the other one, testosterone slash steroids. Now when you think of this, you probably think more of like the bodybuilder who's beating their chest and getting jacked and swole in the gym and going on roid ragers. Um, usually don't associate testosterone steroids with endurance athletes. And it's for opposite reasons really why some endurance athletes choose to dope with testosterone. And this basically is why when an athlete takes testosterone or steroid, it basically speeds up the recovery process substantially. So the athlete can train harder and harder day after day after day. Like think about doing intervals day after day after day and the amazing adaptations that could happen if you're recovering quicker. So that's really the reason why uh, the athletes will do that. And the t mechanism by which testosterone works is it reduces muscle protein breakdown, um, but it also, interestingly enough, can increase red, red blood cell count too, like the EPO. So when you put the EPO together, the testosterone together, you can see why why that combination is appealing to all these guys that are, are doping. But like EPO, 
testosterone has certain side effects. Then that's, uh, you know, balding, big man boobies, you know, your ball shrinking, uh, possible liver damage, um, and liver shut down if you do like oral steroids. So again, are those performance enhancements worth all those side effects happening? I don't think so. I mean, to me, it's just, it would not be worth it. So that's just a quick glimpse at EPO and testosterone, how they work from a physiological perspective and how they can enhance performance, but also the side effects. Uh, so let's just, let's just wrap this up and I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a backstory or something I heard a long time ago. Um, I think it was like 20 years ago, uh, some people put out a poll asking Olympic athletes, you know, if you could win a gold medal and that required taking drugs, but you were to die one year later, would you still take these drugs? And about 95% of these athletes said, absolutely, I would take drugs, win the gold medal, and I would be happy dying five, you know, one to five years later. That's scary. Like, I know as endurance athletes, like, we really want to be good, but considering, like, the long-term effects, including death, I mean, you can see where performance-enhancing drugs, <laughs> you know, in my opinion, don't have a huge appeal. And here's the other caveat, too, you know, taking EPO by itself or testosterone by itself while not exercising isn't going to turn you into Lance Armstrong. Oh, I'm, sorry, very bad example. Taking EPO and testosterone without, you know, doing the hard training isn't going to turn you into any, you know, superhuman athlete by any means. And sooner or later, that drug use is going to catch up to you and bodily failure is more than likely going to occur or there's going to be some really negative long-term consequences to using performance enhancing drugs. So I know I said I wasn't going to test the uh, test <laughs> talk about the ethics of performance enhancing drugs, but I would not do it. It is just, it's not worth the trade off. It's interesting how they work and how they can improve in performance, but the side effects, in my opinion, farly outweigh you know, how much it's going to increase your performance and give you the glory that you're always looking for. So that is it. For today, my endurance friends. If you haven't checked out the documentary Icarus, I, uh, I t encourage you to do so. It's a very interesting uh, look at, at doping. Uh, please share with this video with your friends if you liked it. Head on over to the Endure Elite blog at www.endureelite.com if you want more videos like this. And until next time, my endurance friends, stay fueled, stay focused, stay fast, and stay informed.